Hi and welcome to the second episode of the Wicked Screencast. Today I will show you how to process user input with Apache Wicked. That is, we will implement the create newsletter form you already saw in the first episode. My name is David Tenzer. You can find out more about me on my homepage davidtenzer.net and you can follow me on Twitter. My handle there is dtenzer. So let's get started. I have made some minor changes to the project skeleton. For example, I have moved one HTML file that we didn't use yet and I have made some minor changes to a class from the business logic that is to the newsletter repository. You can download the newest version of the project skeleton at davidtanzer.net slash wickedsc. But now let's get started with this episode. In this episode we need access to the backend and I want to access the backend using dependency injection. For this I want to use Google Choose. You can of course use Spring Framework or any other dependency injection container if you want. For using Choose I need to register the Choose component injector. This is a class that bridges the gap between Apache Wicket and Choose. This component injector needs a module. This is something choose specific. The module is a Java class which configures the dependency injection. I have already created such a module. It's called newsletter module in our case. My newsletter module needs a database path. This is where the database files should be stored. I want them to be stored in the root of the web application. So I call get servlet context get real path to get a path relative to the root of the web application. Now dependency injection is set up and we can start implementing the create newsletter form where we will need the newsletter repository class from the backend. The first thing I want to do is I want to show the correct number of existing newsletters in the create newsletter page. As you probably remember from the last episode, we used the hard coded value 5 back then, but now we want to get the real value from the database. For this we need the newsletter repository. This is a class from our backend which is responsible for managing all the newsletters. That is for storing them in the database and for fetching them again. We want to choose to give us an instance of this repository. So we simply annotate a private variable with add inject and choose will take care of getting the correct instance when the page class is created. Now we can set the value of our num newsletters model to the correct value and we have to change the data type because the repository returns along in its size method. Now we can build and run the, run the application and we should already see the correct number which is zero in our case because we have not created any newsletters yet. We can only test this number later when we have the code to create newsletters. For now it will stay zero. So I navigate to the create newsletter page and you see the number of newsletters is now zero. It was five in the last episode. Now we can finally start the main part of this episode. That is, now we can start to implement the create newsletter form. For this we have to change the HTML file slightly because we have to assign wicked IDs to all the parts of the form that will be components. We assign a wicked ID to the form itself, to the text field and to the button. The text field will be responsible for reading the user input and the button component will process the on-submit event of the form. 
in this case the form wouldn't necessarily need to be a component but it's a good idea to create a component on the Java side anyway because it will help with testing later but this is the topic of an, a different episode. Let's start with importing the three component classes we need right now. We need a component class for the form, the text field and the button. First I create the form. The form needs a generic parameter. In this case we don't care about it so we can use void here but we could use this generic parameter to assign a model to the form. The next component I create is the text field. The text field again has a generic parameter but in this case we need it. I use string as the generic parameter because the type of the model of the text field is string. This means that the text field will be used to read string input from the user. I do not assign a model yet. This means that the text field doesn't work yet, but let's first create the button component before creating the model. I now create the button and I create it as an anonymous inner class because the button will uh, process the on submit event of the form so it has to Im override the method on submit. You can see that I have added the text field and the button to the newsletter form not to this. This is because the component hierarchy in the Java code has to match the component hierarchy in the HTML exactly. So we would get a runtime error if I had added the text field or the button to this instead of the form. I continue by creating a model for the text field. I again use a property model and reference a another property of the page itself and I have called the property newsletter name. Now I can implement the onSubmit method. What I want to do here is I want to add a new newsletter to the repository and then redirect again to the create newsletter page to make sure the page is reloaded. So I create a new newsletter entity and here I can use the uh, the private variable of the class itself because it will be set by the model of the text field. Now when everything compiles we can try to run the application. As I said before, we in this case we wouldn't necessarily need the form component because we implement on submit here in the button. On the other hand, in a form with only one button we could also implement on submit in the form, then we wouldn't need the button component. In a form with multiple buttons you need the button components in any case. Now chat is running again so I can reload the page. You'll see in a moment that there is a bug in my implementation of the form. When I submit the form nothing happens. This is because I used a wrong value for the name of the property in the property model. As you already know from last week the property model gets two constructor parameters, an object and a name of a property. 
and it searches a property with the given name in the given object. Now what I did is I didn't pass a property name as the second parameter, I passed the property in itself and this obviously doesn't work. But now that I have changed the code so that the property name is passed as the second parameter, everything works again. And when I submit the form, you just saw that the number of newsletters incremented. Now the form is already working. I can enter a newsletter name in the text field, click the submit button and a newsletter is created and saved to the database. But there's a problem right now. I could just leave the text field empty and click the button and a newsletter would be created, but the newsletter would have no name. For this we need to validate the input the user gave us. To display the result of the validation, I add a feedback panel to the page. In the HTML code, I just need a placeholder, in this case a div, and I have given it the wicked ID feedback. And in the Java code, I have created a feedback panel component. Now the first thing I want to try is I want to make the text field required, so I just call set required on the text field component. Now it shouldn't be possible anymore to leave it blank. So let's try that. I leave it blank, press submit and an error message occurs. So this is already working. But we can do better. I want all newsletter names to have at least three characters. For this I need the string validator. The string validator is a validator that comes with Wicket which provides all kinds of string validation. In this case we want to use the minimum length validator. I can add as much validators to a component as I want. In this case I only want the minimum length validator. Of course I could also implement my own validator. But this is an advanced topic and I will not cover it in this screencast. If you want to know more about validators, just drop me an email. When I now try to create a newsletter with a very short name, I see an error message and when I use a long enough name, the newsletter is created. So this is how you validate user input. Always make sure to validate all user input. It will save you a lot of headaches later. This was the second episode of this screencast about Apache Wicket. Now you know the basics about processing user input and forms and form components. In the next episode I will show you how to display repeating data when we will develop a list of already created newsletters. My name is David. If you have any further questions, please contact me. My email address is business at davidtanser.net.